tonight and for the next couple of videos we've been redoing one of our mountains and uh, the tunnel portals that go through the mountains but I thought I would do a video on what we did with our tunnel portals our entrances for the tunnel uh, some of the new rocks that we put on the mountain with rock molds and the sculpt the molding and foam structure of the new tunnel section. I thought it would be a good learning experience for a lot of the newer members in the model railroading and maybe for some of the older that, you know, maybe some new ideas for those or new ways of doing things. And you guys, may also have some other ways that are better or easier um, you can always comment on them I'm always you know up for some criticism I doesn't bother me but what we're here to do is share learn and teach so I'll start out with the tunnel portals and we'll work our way through the video and I hope you guys enjoy just a bunch of the video clips I put together uh, for you to see how I worked on a lot of this and uh, it's a continuation from last week's video with a bunch of the club members helping me uh, during the week I've been a little here a little there uh, actually all day Sunday today did a lot so uh, I covered quite a bit today and I think when the members come tomorrow night, I'll probably have a lot more done. Uh, and then I'll continue working with those guys as well uh, with some more hands-on stuff for them. But uh, enjoy the video. Thanks for watching, guys. All right, guys, here's the entrance to the tunnel portal. And you'll see what we have. Unfortunately, I was going to make one long video, but... Now we have to divide the video up into three right. different segments. Hi guys. As you can see, I have what's the inside of my tunnel. A lot of guys like to know how we do some of the insides of our tunnel to like replicate rock in that. What I use, I found this worked really good. Let's take some of this aluminum foil and we'll bring this foil around and get it up in place. We'll get her cut to where we need it. it fits in there nice. Cut off the excess. Now what I found that I like to do, you see this is really not looking like rock or anything. But what we'll do is we'll take this aluminum foil I'll crunch it up and uh, then we'll put it in place. I actually have a piece I crumbled already that fits. And what we'll do is we'll fit this on the dull side and we'll get it up in here where we want it. And uh, what we're going to do, make sure we got everything fitted like we like it to be and uh, we're going to tack it in place with a good old hot glue gun and uh, just go along get your hot glue 
glue it up. We'll get the first part glued in place. And, uh, get it down in there. You can round this out if you want. I really don't see a need for that. I try to get it nice and flat. And we'll lift her up. Another bead or two along here. It'll hold it in place. And we're just patting it down. We don't have to press on it. You want to have all that crumbly look for rock. And, uh, and we'll just keep working our way around it with the hot glue. Just enough to hold it in and keep it in place. And once we get all this done, then we'll go over and we'll actually spray paint it. Yeah, I have this so we can slide it into the mountain where we want to put it. And, uh, you can get this all fit in nice, nice and neat. You don't have to do nothing fancy. It gives you that crumbly look. <coughs> and that's all you're after. You're not really going to see it that much other than, you know, you might look in and you don't want to see all your wood and stuff from where your tunnels are. You'd rather have a little bit of something in inside. That way then you're not looking at the blue styrofoam or that kind of stuff. We'll get this glued in place. And after we get the first one in, then we'll go along and we'll put the second one in or whatever it takes to fill out this particular tunnel portal. I'm only going about maybe two feet into the tunnel. So you don't really see much more than that. And it's pretty dark in there. So once this is painted black and gray, it'll give it that look. So let me get this all filled in and then we'll show you the paint process I use. All right, now that we got our aluminum foil in for the mountains, what we're going to do is we're going to spray them and uh, we're going to use this glacier gray and that'll be our first coat so I'll get that put on and that you just want to go down make a nice light coat you don't have to go real heavy or anything with it that'll give us a nice coat on the inside don't worry if you get the tunnel portals you can always touch them up we just want to get rid of that silver chrome look inside this tunnel portal and as you see the seam you're not going to see that from outside it's pretty much going to fade. All we want to do is get rid of that chrome looking color. As you can see it gives you the rocky ripples and so forth. If you see anything that you don't like you can crunch it in a little more. But, uh, like I said you won't really notice it. Uh, we got that coat on. I'll come back in a few minutes after this dries. I'll give it 10 15 minutes to dry, and then we'll hit the second coat on, and you'll see how much more we get out of it with a different color. All right, now that we got our gray in, we're going to go hit it with some black and give it a little bit of just lightly spray it. It'll give it a little bit of definition and kind of highlight things a little.
more of where you're in and out of the tunnel with steam engines. You want to see more black in that area anyway. So we'll run kind of down a little. Give that a nice little streak where the steam engines would run through. But pretty much going to blast most of it with the black. Just giving it a nice light color. And it gives it a, a decent highlight. And I'm using a flat black on that. When it dries, it'll you'll see what it looks like when it's all dried. Well, now that it's painted, it's pretty much what you'll see on the, from the outside looking in. When it's on the layout, obviously you won't have light in the back. So, but that'll give you, you know, a good, decent, you know, inner tunnel portal. So, uh, let me get back to work here. I'm actually going to paint the outside tunnel portal because it is pretty beat and uh, I'm going to be doing some retaining walls to go with it as well. So I'll probably paint this gray and then do my brushing on it and uh, make it look pretty good. Alright, the tunnel portal is pretty beat up. Uh, it's one that's been around for quite a while. It's got a lot of white spots on it. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to paint it with the glacier gray like we did on the inside of the tunnel and later I'll go back and I'll do some brush painting with some darker grays but this will hide a lot of those beat up sections on this tunnel portal so we'll give this a spray and you don't have to go heavy like I said you gotta learn to just go light coats if it takes you two or three that's fine this will get the tunnel portal basically in one color to start and then uh, I can turn around and tune it up and make it look a lot better but we can highlight things on this with the darker grays. Now we'll look at this decent coat on it. Nice light coat. We'll leave it sit and dry. I'll put a second coat on then I'll show you guys how to do the dark gray. I'll also get some of the retaining walls uh, painted as well and we'll sit down at the bench and I'll show you what I do to them next. All right, here's the two retaining walls that I made. These are going to be used out there uh, with that mountain section. In, uh, these I made out of a casting we made a long time ago. In, uh, we made this rubber mold casting. This is using some of the latex rubber and we had made a, a mold. It's very like flimsy. Then we have a, a base for it to sit in. And, uh, it works out rather well for putting your hydrocal in. We take the hydrocal, put some gray paint in it to give it a, a base color. And uh, what I'll do is I'll paint these two uh, like I did the tunnel portal and then we'll come back and we'll do the uh, dark gray to for the highlights in that. And we'll kind of show you what we do in that realm. But these are Pensy walls that I'll use and uh, they'll be up there on the mountain. All right, now we got our retaining wall here. And I'm gonna use a dark granite for part of it. I'm gonna use a pewter gray and crusty old black. So what we'll do, and then I got just an old number six brush, it's my beater brush. Uh, we'll put some of the paint on here on a little tray. I use these little trays from when you get your electrical tape. I find they work really good to put your paint in. Uh, let's see. We'll open this one up. There we go. Put a little bit of the dark gray in there. Just the light gray, the dark gray, and a little bit of black. We'll 
we'll use these three colors to light up our uh, do our paintwork here. And I'll put them there, and I'll just take the black, the gray, and I'll dab it. I don't need to go gung ho with it. I just want to kind of almost like a dry brush on it. Go over. You can see some of the other gray below it. Yeah, go through the whole thing like this. And, uh, a little bit of each of the colors. Kind of combine the two together. And, uh, I'll work them in a little at a time. I might put a little bit of black in there to work that in a little. They may go over top of that some more. That was really strong. But that's okay. I don't want every block and everything to look identical. I just want it, want it to get to look like a stone wall of various colors. So we'll just work our way through. Take a little bit of black. Dab it out more this time. So, as we work with it, Kind of just work it in. Nothing special. A little bit of dark, a little bit of light. And, uh, take your time. No rush, you know, got nobody to impress but yourself. You know, I, I find this is somewhat relaxing. You don't have to go any particular direction. You can just lightly brush it on and vary the colors a little. The object is to to get it all different colors. That's a little too dark, look at that. I'll wipe it down a little. It gives me highlights in there, so. You know, don't hesitate to play with it and try different things. Yeah, you know, that actually came out really nice. So I might add some more black after I do the gray and then wipe it down and highlight it. So there's a lot you can do. But, uh, Get this all wiped down and we'll do the tunnel portal the same way. And we'll do the two stone walls the same way. So we basically get everything to match up in this area. And it looks like all the stone and block and everything came from one area. Slowly work it in. And we'll blend this up in the mountain when I do the, the sides of the mountain. We'll probably put some weeds on this and some other things as we go along. And like I said, just vary your colors a little. You don't want everything the same. Actually like that black up there, it makes a nice highlight. I'll probably do that through most of the, the wall. And you can see how much a few drops of paint can vary one thing. You got some light grays in here, you got some dark grays. You got a little bit of each of the different grays. You don't want it all the same. So 
You don't want it all too light. You don't want it all too dark. Work with it. Now I like the way that black turned out, so what we'll do, we'll go along, we'll put some more of this black in, give it a white down. That's looking pretty decent. And we just run some of this black over top of all of that, take a rag and give it a white. If you don't like it, you can always repaint it. That's the way I look at it. I think that looks pretty good. It highlights the cracks. Work with it a little. You can come up with a nice looking wall. Some may have said, oh, the Hydra cow with the gray paint in it looked great. Yeah, it, it, it looked okay. You know, if you wanted to do it that way, you could do it that way. You could leave it all. This. To me, that's just one solid color. By doing this, you get, I guess what they would say, what, contrast the colors? Not all one color. A little bit of gray, a little bit of brick. I think in the long run this will look pretty good when it's up there on the wall, right above that mountain there. Work it in. Starting to look pretty good. Put a little bit lighter gray in there. Yeah. I think it's looking pretty good. Sometimes you don't try for an effect and it just happens. And like I say, everybody's got a way of doing it. And Got all different ways you can try. And, uh, gives you a real nice effect. I think this wall's gonna look pretty good on the side of that mountain or that scene. Highlight it all up. I think that looks pretty good. You might call that one just about done. A little bit of black in there, a little gray. But, uh, I think it makes a pretty good looking wall. And I'll let you guys be the judge of it. To me, I think that's going to look good. I'll go through and I'll put some vines up on this and so forth I gotta do the top part yet so might as well get that painted alright get my gray and a little bit of black in there probably a little more black than anything get my grays get my blacks in there Cause that's gonna be the dirty part
wipe that down a little. that'll look okay on the part of the mountain when we start getting scenery in and everything that's gonna look good well thanks for watching this part and we'll see as we progress into it all right testing one two three that piece that we did with the tunnel and so forth. Made that and that little slide right in here. Right. Get that up where she belongs. Get back where we want her. And then I got the Slabs that we made. As you can see, keep these set up in place. I'm just at to have this one right about here, and this one is going to go up over here. I'll probably have to cut it down. That'll give you a general idea in the direction that I'm headed but, uh, might have to pull this old section off here we can bring that kind of around like that we'll work that in I think that's going to work bring that like that I think when done and said, that'll do what we need it to do. Might have to pull this old foam out here. Every time we make a change, rip something out, put something in. And we'll get rid of that. Try to clean this up a little right here. that right in there like that and have this one up here like this and then we'll work on blending them in and that'll be the next step so I have to get some styrofoam and uh, I'll work on fitting things into place and uh, I'll try to let you guys follow along with me uh, okay. <clears throat> All right. Let's look around at what we got. Thank you all for following this part of our build. We appreciate it. Don't forget to hit like and share let everybody know that we're out here and you can also catch us on our o gauge model railroading tips tricks and more on facebook it's a group that we have there sharing lots of ideas you can also catch us at hennings trains in lansdale pa and we have our website at henningstrains.com we have a lot of o gauge 
H O, N gauge, S gauge, and lots of accessories to go with your trains as well. And you can also pick us up on the train shop weekly, usually about every other week on little new things that are out. Thank you.